Hey guys, welcome to InFlight. My name is Norm. I'm happy to have you guys on board for another ride on a freshly minted podcast. Uh, whether you listen to us from SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, we really appreciate you guys listening to us. I am broadcasting from Florida, which is going to be on the east coast of the United States and the southern part of the United States at that. So we have great uh, tropical weather down here uh, most time of the year. And actually, this time of the year is one of the nicest just before summer hits. So it's going to be a little hot down here in the summer, but we love it down here anyway. But with that said, we've been on the quarantine just like the rest of the world, just like you guys have been. But we're managing down here. I think Florida is a little bit less restrictive than um, other places in the United States, only because we haven't had it as bad. But, you know, we're taking our precautions down here. We're wearing masks. We're wearing gloves. We're staying away. We're social distancing and whatever we have to do. But I have to tell you, uh, for somebody who works outside, I've seen the traffic pick up again ever so slightly than the day before, each and every day. Uh, we've been what, locked away for almost two months now, it feels like. And so in the beginning, um, I work outside, so my job places me outside 90% of the time, and I've seen it where every day looked like a Sunday, meaning there was no traffic on the road. Uh, hard to tell what day it was. To now, everything is being picked back up. Life is slowly getting back to normal. But, you know, it's going to be one day at a time. You can't rush this thing. You have to be uh, precautious and uh, take safety measures and slowly get back to life as we know it. But so far, so good for us down here. What about the rest of you guys? I hope you guys are adjusting to life being locked inside. One thing I do know that the state up to simming world during this has... Um, tremendously improved and gone up in so many different ways. Um, just from looking at traffic online on VATSIM and on IVO and even Pilot Edge, um, lots of you guys are flying all times of days and nights. There's lots of air traffic control coverage there, especially on VATSIM Friday nights. They have what's called open night, open mic night, two nights in a row where they just covered and staffed almost the entire United States. I've seen it done in Europe also. And just having that coverage is good. <clears throat> I've got a lot of questions on my streams from people wanting to know how to do VATSIM for the first time because they're realizing that they do have a VATSIM coverage there. And I've been given instructions, you know, telling people what to do, how to start, to take notes, to write stuff down, not just try to wing it. And that just shows that there's a lot more people come into the simming world or finding more time to sim now during this quarantine that never had a chance before. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy about you guys um, just taking the initiative to learn how to add an extra element to online flying, not just flying by yourself, but flying with other people online. So that's good to see. I mean, another thing with the simming world, you know, with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 coming out, for us Xplain users, we noticed that there's a lot more developers now dropping their products on us, in, especially airplanes and stuff like that. Uh, we interviewed one just developer on the last um, two podcasts ago, coming out with the A300. And so there's a lot more planes coming out. The MD-11 is coming out. Um, the A340 is coming out. Combination of Tolis and Flight Factor. Just many different things that we have to look forward to. So hopefully, um, when these planes come out, we'll still have the time to fly. Even though I know a lot of you guys might have been furloughed, laid off from work, not be able to go to school, probably looking forward to go back outside. But whatever it is, I, I like to state up the simming committee right now. And it's all kudos to you guys in the audience that have making up the numbers and participating in many different ways for flight simming. Whether it's FSX, P3D, or X-Plane, you know, whatever you guys fly, man, um, keep doing what you're doing, definitely. Now, on this episode of uh, In Flight, we're going to be introduced to a gentleman named Roy. Roy is the developer of XP Realistic Pro. Yes, XP Realistic Pro. That's the program that you've installed on your computer, if you're like me, um, about, what, two years ago or more? and set it and forgot about it. Meaning that once you set it, it worked in the background. Experialistic Pro is a software that adds a uh, extra element to flying your airplane in the sim. A little bit more realism, including head movement and wind sounds and rumble effect and landing gear sounds and so forth. Uh, but all I have to say is that this, this is a very uh, good interview uh, with Roy. Uh, he's a very enthusiastic developer. He's a very dedicated developer. And you will hear all of that in the interview to come. 
So without further ado, uh, let's talk to Roy from XP Realistic Pro. Hi, Roy. Welcome to the show. I hope you're doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you for having me here. Welcome, welcome, Roy. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, as we were just talking um, off recording that InFlight has had quite the day um, with our episodes. They're doing very well today, which is great. We're getting a lot of press and I am excited to continue that trend with Roy. So uh, you would have heard in the intro, but Roy is um, the creator of XP Realistic, which is used by a lot of people, including Norm. So Norm will have quite a bit of questions about that, I'm sure. Um, as I think we have all gotten used to Norm being the one wanting to get nitty gritty with some details with our guests. So uh, <laughs> we have True. that. Um, so how about you start off by giving us a general background, you know, what your experience is, how you came to make XP realistic, and um, also your x story as well. Sure. So uh, first of all, thank you again for having me. It's my... Uh... It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and I would like first to apologize for my accent. I'm from Israel and I have a strange ac accent when I'm excited. So <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'm glad That's to hear cool. you're excited. Uh, yeah. We all have an accent, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, sort of. Um, yeah, so I'll go back. Uh, you know, aviation was part of me uh, since I was a kid. Um, I think back in um, 1998, I got the flight simulator. Uh, 98 and uh, it was the first uh, simulator I ever used uh, since then I, I bought every simulator of Microsoft uh, up to P3D um, until 2017 where x 11 came out um, so yeah I mean aviation was part of me all my life uh, um, I had I had a simulator back at home when I was a kid um, you know horrible computer horrible controls but I could fly, so I had I had something to play with it um, until actually I I became a skydiving instructor uh, back in uh, it was uh, 2003, um, and then when I finished to be a skydiving instructor in 2006, I, I decided that I want to be a pilot. Um, so I started to save some money. I, I worked as a web developer. Um, I saved uh, m enough money to fly to, to USA, to the USA, uh, to Florida, Daytona Beach, and to do my uh, private pilot and, and instrument trading. Um, and uh, back that time, I really wanted to become a commercial pilot, but I didn't actually realize what it means. So living in Florida, I lived in a flying community called Spruce Creek. It's in, uh, next to Daytona Beach. Um, I actually lived among real pilots, so I had chance to to understand how they live and and what are what the conditions they live in, and they live great. But as far as family <laughs> life and stuff like that, uh, I realized uh, that it's just not for me. I wanted, you know, uh, I want to have I wanted to have a family and to be with the family most of the time. So being a pilot is just a little bit different. Uh, it's just uh, uh, making you, forcing you to be two weeks probably like working and two weeks on standby or not working. And I, I came to realize that it's not something that I want. So this is the time where I decided to take it back to, to be as my hobby. And I continued to fly uh, while I was in Florida. I flew so many type of airplanes. It was an amazing time. Uh, compared to what we have here in Israel, it's like amazing. Here in Israel, the aviation sucks. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, other than that, um, it was 2011. This is when I actually uh, created my first aviation related product. Um, it's called uh, Aviation WNB Calculator. Uh, it relates to weight and balance. Um, I found that one. Yeah, it's pretty oh, cool. Oh, really? Well, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, uh, I have yeah. it. I downloaded it also. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's great to hear. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I wrote it back in 2011. It was my first mobile application um, that I ever written. And I wrote it because I had that need as, as a pilot to, you know, to easily do weight and balance calculations. Back then, I did it on a paper. And it's, you know, after all, um, when the mobile apps came in, it, I felt really, really strange doing it on a paper where, where I can do it in, in a matter of seconds via the phone. So I created that app specifically for the Cessna 172SP, which is the airplane I flew with uh, back then. And uh, I started to spread it among my pilot friends, and they really liked it. Eventually, I created more and more profiles for different aircrafts. And 
I contacted Sporty's uh, Pilot Shop, if you if you know them. Um, yeah, buy from them a few times, actually. Yeah, they're really great. Um, and uh, I had a partnership with them where they promote, promoted the app. And doing that, I think that step brought the app to be on the top 10 um, aviation apps in the United States. Um, it was all the way until 2015, uh, more than uh, 50,000 customers. Um, it was a big hit. I mean, many, many civil patrols, military, lots of pilots. It was amazing. Uh, this way, I actually got to be, you know, like a sole developer. Understood the, I, I understood the developing business, uh, writing applications, uh, understanding customer needs. Um, and all that background brought me to where I am today, where I can actually um, look on, on, my, on a hobby like simulators and, and see where, what is missing, what, what I can do to make this better for me and for other simmers. Um, so going through the time after that application, I, I created a few more aviation related, but it, they were less successful. Um, but overall, uh, it was 2017, I believe, that made a big change for me because um, I really like P3D and I do still love it. However, mm -hmm. uh, as a real life pilot, uh, you know, physics is something that uh, we all look for. Um, mm -hmm. And specifically being a real, real life pilot, it's something that is really missing in Prepare 3D. Um, although I do really like that simulator. But when Xplan, Xplan 11 came out, uh, this is the time when I was amazed um, by how how close they made it to the real life. Uh, you know, simulator will never be exactly like real life, but it's enough close to give you that, that good feeling uh, that I'm talking about. Um, so I started to uh, build my own home cockpit. Uh, I bought some great controls, great, great computer. Um, mm -hmm. By that time, I actually could afford it um, and I saved it. I saved money for that. Um, and I actually invested a lot. I, I, bought, I bought a really um, expensive uh, a yoke by Brunner um, and Redbird, uh, Redder Pedals. I told my wife, listen, it's a one time. <laughs> it will happen. I promise you it will happen once in life and never again. And uh, th this is all I really need to be happy in my life. Um, and eventually, eventually she, she understood it. But it, it, it's, it's only 2000. Uh, and 20, and I already start to uh, to to you know to nag her with with uh, telling her that hey I need to upgrade my computer hey I need to, to add this throttle <laughs> hey I need... she said hey hey you lied to me you told me it's it's gonna end up on 2017 so I told her well yeah you you knew who you're marrying with so take it <laughs> perfect. I love that. That is perfect, yeah. man. Yeah, I think it's it's a, a, every every simmer every simmer's problem. Uh, but anyhow, yes. um, <laughs> yeah. So I ended up had, having this station here, which where I invested a lot of money in, and I flew and I loved it. But something was missing missing to me in, in uh, X Plane Eleven. It was that little small effects of making. Uh, make, makes you feel that you're in a real cockpit. And this is where, when I started to work on uh, XP Realistic, which, by the way, I didn't even know it's going to be called XP Realistic. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was just adding effects uh, for myself. I didn't even upload it anywhere. I, I spread it among my, my friends. They loved it. And, um, you know, you told me to, to tell my, my background, so maybe I'll stop here and we can take it forward uh, with more questions. I was just going to jump in and actually read something that I came across, a little snippet of something that you had. I think it's on Sounds Facebook great. or something like that. And this is your, your description of how you came up with XP Realistic, and I think it's just perfect, perfect for us simmers and also coming from somebody who's uh, been into aviation in the real world too. And this is what you wrote. I'm going to read your writing right here. You said, I switched to XP11 two months ago. Love it, as you can see. I'm wondering if there's an add-on that adds sounds immersion to cockpits. For example, when lowering flaps, I want to hear the wind friction with reference to my speed. Uh, when I pull the yoke a bit strong, I want to hear that wind sound. If you have flown a real airplane, you know that I'm what I'm talking about. I want the ground shake sound, turbulent shake sound, and more. I had all those in P3D, and it was very immersive. Do you know of any add-on that will bring me that into XP? That's what you wrote. And a month yeah. later, Experialistic <laughs> Pro was released. Seriously, that is crazy. Yeah. 
my wife didn't nice, understand man. where I am during that month. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. Um, and and yeah, when I felt that some that that thing is missing, I I started to look out how to how to actually write plugins. And back then, I didn't know I didn't know if, even how to write uh, C plus So I ended up writing it in um, in Lua with Fly with Lua, which is an amazing, amazing platform. They're doing an amazing work there. Um, it, it actually allowed Experialistic to, to be alive. Um, and, and I actually started to write more and more effects. When it got to the point that I saw the attention it gets, uh, I decided to take it to the next step. And you know, in order to allow myself to uh, spend more time on creating more effects, I needed, I needed to justify it. Um, so I ended, ended it up as a, being as a real product. Um, and you know, I couldn't believe the the amount of love I got from this community, and which which I think you know, even before that, I loved that community, um, and and after that, I loved it even more because the people, the 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 way the people would uh, want to help each other, and the way the people want to things to get improved, and they don't they don't mind to spend hours talking to you and explaining what they want. I find it amazing, and I think we are uh, we have. A great hobby, and even to be more specific, we have a great simulator in that hobby. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, basically, I, I continued to write those uh, uh, versions of Experialistic until it got to the point where it got stable. It was about uh, 1.0.9, um, and then I had a few minor updates. Um, and this this three or four months, it was constant development. I didn't leave the computer. I talked with people. Everyone told me what they want. I edited it, and um, eventually, I decided, okay, I need a break. Uh, <laughs> you know, after about five months overall of uh, development, where I didn't even leave the computer, I thought that I got to the point where the plugin is is stable enough and it's it's giving what I wanted to begin with, and actually more than that. So. I said, if I am satisfied, I hope that the rest of the community to be. And and check it out. Three years later, and um, it's still going pretty well. Um, and you know, during that time, I'm going to talk about that period of time where many many customers asked, "Hey, where is Roy? Where where did he, where did he go? And why don't we get more updates?" Which are all great and and really good questions. That is where actually my first son was born, and I was totally like, uh, you know. I was off from the computer for a few months, uh, dealing with with uh, <laughs> changing Jeez, divers and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got lucky because the software that you pushed out in Experialistic Pro, man, I have to tell you that I've had this installed for God knows how long since X Men Level came out, and it's one of those programs that once you set it, you forget about it. You forget that it's in there. Until you get a new right. airplane, you do a touchdown, there's no bounce, there's no movement, and you're like, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Yeah. I don't understand what's going on. Then you go, oh, yes, Expert Realistic is not turned on for this airplane, or I didn't set it up properly, or something's going on. You know? <laughs> and um, yeah. I'm, one of the, I'm one of those guys, when I use it, I actually dial, dial back the sensitivity a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's set to 50%, I'll bring it back to 25%. People ask me all the time, hey, what's my XP realistic settings? And usually what I do when I, when I turn it on, it's got default settings that you have put in there for different planes. I dial it back right. just a tad. But I'm telling you, without it, it's not the same. But what I like, it's running in the background and you just don't even know or realize that it's on. You don't have to touch it once you set it one time. And that's what I love about the program. It's genius, Ben. Definitely. Well... Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, He's yeah, doing his I, job then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and you know, um, flying X Plane Eleven without it, like you said, it's it's just not the same. And and the the best um, indication for me was is like you said, whenever it's not turned on, you actually feel it right away. Um, and this is what made me believe in that plugin. Um, ad, uh, you know, like, and not like other softwares that I wrote uh, for the simulator. I can talk about it as well. Um, but specifically, Experialistic has something about it uh, that that just. To be honest, I actually ask myself, how come no developer made something like that before? <laughs> Even for Explain yeah. Explain Eleven, uh, sorry, Explain Ten. It, it's something that is like essential. Um, and even uh, moreover. 
how come Laminar did not uh, put some effort on adding those effects? And then I, I, you know, getting into this field more and more, I actually got these, the, the answer for these questions. Um, um, and and later on, I I actually you know like I was happy that I took those this position of of being the one that added this plugin to make people more happy with the with the simulator, um, and Xplan org loved it, Laminar loved it. They actually published uh, an article about it a long time ago. Um, but anyhow, you know like in Hebrew we have a say, uh, lots of water uh, were going in the river while things happen. So it means a lot of things happened since then. Um, so I, I gotcha. ended up, uh, you know, like after all, I'm a sole developer, unlike many other great companies that, you know, constantly creating plugins and airplanes and sceneries. And I love seeing their jobs, I mean, their work. And, uh, and eventually I, I am myself, I'm a sole developer. I'm also working as a full-time uh, software management manager in a company, a startup called Upright. Um, it's, it's a startup that uh, created uh, this uh, little gadget that you place on your, on your back and it vibrate, vibrates whenever you sit, uh, when you're slouch, when you're slouching. Um, so basically trains oh, you wow. to sit straight and, um, you know, as a seamer, you, you sit in front of the computer and sometimes you find yourself in a really awkward positions, <laughs> where, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, and, and, um, I, I came to realize that uh, this startup really interesting me. So I joined there about, uh, three years ago, uh, right when I, uh, finished extra realistic. Um, and since then my mind was way off from the simulator. Um, of course, I never stopped flying. Um, I fly here and there, but not like back in 2017 or 18. Um, and the thing that I kept doing, of course, is giving support to the to the customers. Uh, whoever had issue, I always uh, was responsive enough to you know to help help him. But um, in terms of developing more effects or taking it to the next step, I had a few issues with that because. Mm. I wrote extra realistic without knowing it's going to be a product. So the way I wrote it, first, it's not a standalone plugin. It's it's written in Fly with Lua. It has its mm. own limitations and 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 its own uh, downsides. And um, secondly, the way the software is written, it, I got to the point where it did not allow me to advance it even more, um, which I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so I came to realize at some point that if I want to make it. Uh, happen and and take out another update for the extra realistic it must be a major update where i rewrite it from ground to top and mm -hmm. to do that you need time uh, so i started about one year ago um, i started it all the way uh, whoever uh, from the listeners uh, that came into the forum saw my messages i always kept things transparent all the road all the way, even if it's bad, I told, mm -hmm. hey, I, I have a baby and stuff like that. So I was totally trans transparent uh, until to the point that I felt bad, you know, as a developer, I felt bad. The community is shouting, Roy, where are you? We want mm -hmm. more updates. We want more effects. And God, they're totally right. And so I, I must take this stage and, and first say, uh, you know, guys, um, I'm not perfect. And uh, I would like to apologize uh, if I made any of the customers, any of the uh, extra realistic users um, upset from that. And for the time that I was not that available, um, of course, I apologize. And I always said to you in the little words, trust me. And here I am mm -hmm. today. Um, wow. I'm in 80% development of uh, extra realistic V2. Um, the V2 is, uh, I must say, it's it's a whole different different plugin, improved, and I'm gonna talk about uh, things that I got, uh, you know, improved over there. Um, you want me to start, or you have any questions regarding the? No, I was just gonna say, what are you doing, Roy? Developers don't apologize for anything, man. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? No, man, that was good. That was great of you. Great of you to do that, man. Even if you don't have to, but you did. That is great. Yeah, I mean, you know, something about it is to be honest. And if you, you know, I, I don't want to sound like, I, I, if you compare it, uh, me to other companies or developers, uh, I don't think that other companies were, uh, you know, like so communi communicative with their customers 
in, in the way I was. I took it personally. So I was speaking with people one-on-one -on -one and talking with them. And I didn't make it too official. And it, it was important for me to do it. So I will keep that close relationship with the community. And it mm -hmm. benefits for, for everyone, um, for both sides. So, um, so again, here, it's my point in, in time to, you know, to be honest all the way and say, guys, you know, I, I, got, uh, I made a mistake along the road. And um, that's fine. I'm human. Um, mm -hmm. and, and eventually I always knew that there will be the day that I will go back to uh, extra realistic and, and rewrite it. It, w it was just unclear when it's going to happen. It's, it takes about four months just to come to a point where you have a better, um, four months of constant working. And while you're, we, while you have a baby and, and you work full time, guys, that's not an easy, an easy task, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that the trigger uh, that caused me going back to, to uh, business. Uh, first, I, I got back flying, and um, um, I flying, I'm flying with a few friends with, uh, you know, on multiplayer, um, and they asked me, come on, Roy, this is the time, you should go back, and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and, and then all the Vulcan, uh, you know, Vulcan version uh, was about to come out, and I didn't even know if it's exp the current XP is going to work or not. I, I was surprisingly happily happy to see that it is working other than oh, yeah. minor minor issues but um, uh, which by the way I already re already reported that 90% of them are fixed by laminar themselves but anyhow um, the, all this progress of flight similar to, to uh, 2020 and Vulcan and uh, and the new version of p3d everything together made me understand hey guys I'm not gonna leave you behind and um, XP Realistic is not dead. It's more than alive. And so I, I brought up the project I wrote uh, one year ago where I started to write it. I looked at the code and I said, wow, I could make it better. So I rewrote it again <laughs> from scratch. <laughs> oh my God. Perfectionist. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I'm doing it again, I want it to, and this is taking me now to talk about what, what got improved, but I want it to be a software that I can advance over time and not to get again to the point where I say, guys, I'm sorry, the software uh, got to the point where I cannot add things. Uh, it's, just, it's just not going to work. So I, I wrote it everything you know, in a proper way, uh, proper design patterns and everything. And talking about my personal life, I'm, I've, been develop I've been a developer since 2007. Um, and... You know, I took all my qualities that I gained through the years and, and placed them now inside this plugin. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few, you know, list of improvements that will come uh, on the first uh, beta version of XP Realistic version 2. Uh, so first of all, it is C++ based, uh, which means no more dependency on Fly with Lua, uh, which makes it much more uh, easy for people to install. Uh, less headache when it comes to conflict with other scripts. Um, so, you know, uh, there are many scripts that uh, did not work well with version one. Um, so all, all of them, I, I took the chance to contact their developer and see how we can make it happen. But some of them just didn't work. So uh, people were forced to remove one of the scripts, either XP Realistic or, or, the, or the other script. So. You know, all these issues will be gone on, on uh, V2 since it's a C++-based uh, standalone plugin. The second thing is that it has an optimized performance. On, on V1, many people uh, complained over time uh, that it's, uh, you know, has some FPS impact. And um, I, it was really hard for me always to, to, uh, to fix it because... You know, having this layer of Fly with Lua, which is an amazing layer uh, that, that they provided us as the developers, um, still I, I was limited by, by the performance. I could not go low level and fix things to make the performance better. Nowadays, when I uh, write it on C++, I have full control. And as of now, uh, XP Realistic is taking no FPS at all. Um, awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. As of at this point of this uh, point of development, now the only thing that I notice is when the window of Realistic is uh, on on V2, um, it takes about 
three to five FPS. But then I said to myself, okay, I'm not going to invest invest a lot of time on that because people do not fly with XP Realistic window open most of the time. I want mm -hmm. to believe <laughs> that that is yeah. the reality. <laughs> I never um, open it at all. Yeah. So once, like you said, Norm, once you set it up, uh, it, you you rarely go in and you know tweak it a little bit here and there. Um, so so yeah. So it's fully optimized in terms of performance. Um, the third thing is. Um, it's just rewritten from ground to top, and like I said, it's it's now ready to uh, to uh, I, I'm ready to add more effects. And the the way it's written, it's allowing me to add more sophisticated effects. It means that unlike version one, where effect it's built by either one sound or one uh, camera effect uh, on an effect in V2. Um, I called it back then immersion. Now I'm calling it an effect, by the way. Uh, so yeah. an effect. <laughs> Sorry for the the definitions uh, uh, misunderstand, but yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah, so an effect in V2 can be built by multiple camera movements and multiple sounds at the same time. So uh, effects might uh, will be more sophisticated and more, uh, you know, just I, I have the tools to make them in a, more right for you guys. Um, the fourth thing is um, user interface. Writing it in Fly with Lua, I was limited to the uh, user interface tools, interface tools that they give. And um, while they did an amazing work, still I did not have the opportunity to write it uh, like I wanted. And r nowadays, I, I made my own research about two months ago uh, on which uh, approach I'm going to take on the user interface. And the user interface uh, uh, was done two days ago, by the way. Oh, wow. um, yeah, and I must say, I, I'm, I'm trying to be humble here, but it's an amazing interface. So <laughs> I do say so myself. It's the best. <laughs> I hear you. Well, yeah, Good. I took all the comments from, from the customers. You know, um, back, back then, I did not have the option to add sliders or uh, drop down uh, menus and stuff like that. And the way it looks now, it's just really better. And Slider is going to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to make it more, much more fun to even tweak it and uh, play with it a little bit. Um, and the fifth thing is improving existing effects. I'm taking all the effects from V1. Uh, I might drop one of two, one or two of them. I'm not sure which. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, might, might, might drop one of two that I think that they're just not uh, as common in terms of usage. Mm. Um, because I want the V2 to, to only have effects that, that are high quality. Um, right. And the rest of the effects, what I'm going to do, um, I'm, nowadays I'm, I'm just uh, copying them to C++, but then I'm going to re, uh, rewrite them. Uh, by that I mean that I'm going to take, for example, the, uh, the takeoff roll effect and improve it in a way that the, the vibrations and the sounds that you, you got used to hear um, first of all, you're going to have better sounds, and secondly, the vibrations are not going to be predictable. Uh, it means that uh, it's going to be much more realistic. Unlike today, where they are very rep rep repetitive, sorry. Um, yeah, so it's going to surprise you here and there with a bump here and bump there. Um, of course, everything is according to the simulator up outputs. So overall improvements of the effects, uh, it's going to be... Uh, you know, like three years later effect. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing I, I worked on is making the profile uh, section easier. So if one would want to share a profile with a friend, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, sending him a file. Unlike in V1 where you just couldn't, um, here you just have a file and the file name is Cessna172SP and you just send it to a friend. He placed it in profile directory and that's it. He has the, that uh that profile in his XP Realistic. Um, now, I must say that uh, in terms of sharing profiles, it is not. It is something that I noticed uh, that uh, it is not that common, and and apparently you just people just don't need it because they 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 want to have their own settings. Um, and if over time I will see that this becomes a, a need and and you know something that people ask for, I might even create a cloud cloud sharing uh, for the profiles, but this is something for the future. Um, 
That'd oh. be a really good idea because I know that um, I use Chase Plane whenever I fly P3D, and I mm-hmm. love their cloud service for mm-hmm. views and stuff. It it saves me so much time, and then some people come up with views that I had never thought of before, and it adds to the experience. So, like, I mean, I could see myself really using that. Right. I. I definitely would be able to use a profile or sharing it because I get requests all the time for all different profiles for planes, profiles for different add-ons, profiles for SP realistic. And, you know, if I could just have a file to drag and drop or share through the cloud, it would be perfect. Definitely would be. I think it's a great idea, man. Well, great. This is a great input as well. Thank you, guys. I'm going to take it. And... um... Um, so yeah, set, well, you, set and, you back two more months. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah, all the things that I mentioned right now are planned for the coming beta, and the coming beta is uh, coming on July. And I don't want to say be- that it will come before, and I think it will. But I'm I'm taking I'm saying July uh, just to be on the safe side, um, and um, I'm doing my best to, to to take it out as soon as possible. Now, uh, to our listeners, um, I published a post on our official uh, forums on xplan.org um, about uh, as anyone that who would like to sign up for being a beta tester can just drop their uh, PC specs and uh, monitor setup uh, on, on that thread. And, um, and basically, what I'm going to do in about two weeks from now, I'm going to go over this, this list and pick uh, about 20 beta testers that fits my, uh, you know, my my needs. I want people with three monitors. I want people with with uh, strong computers. With uh, and I want people with low end computers. I want I want a variety to make sh- a, var- a variety of people uh, just to make sure that the re- official release will be uh, stable enough. Unlike the first version where it was an ongoing development, I, I, the first version of uh, XP Realistic I released uh, had tons of bugs, tons of limitations. And the community made it better, um, and I'm I'm thankful for that. But this time I, I'm not I, I'm trying my best not to take the community through the same journey. I want them to get something more complete. Um, so this is why I'm taking this uh, alpha and and beta uh, beta phase. Alpha, it's me and my friends, but uh, beta, it's going to be uh, with with the people from uh, the public. Um, so uh, this is in terms of that. In terms of future things that I would like to add for the XP Realistic, uh, and I can't wait to, to reach them. Um, first is uh, continue to improve the effects and add new effects. And when I'm saying that, I'm talking not about camera and sound effect. I'm talking about effects that will uh, change the be- behavior of your, of your airplane. Um, maybe I will add scenarios, uh, uh, you know, like increase the uh, realism of engine failure um, uh, scenario. Uh, or a bird strike scenario, um, stuff like that. I had in my mind, and I have a long list of wish lists. Some of them from the community, some of them from my own. And um, it's talking about just adding more effects that are non-standard effect. I would call them. So this is one thing. Um, but I do want to put more focus on um, adding. You know what, guys? I'm talking a lot. I, I just noticed. No, so. okay. <laughs> this is what we like. I mean, we're getting lots of great information here from you, so we're not going to step in and stop you at all. Keep going. You want yeah, you want a Red Bull or some water? No, Norm and I don't have anything interesting to say. You're the one who keeps the show going. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, let's talk about uh, airplane effects for a second. I mean, one of the ones that got me the first time when I had Experialistic installed is when I had turbulence. And I got right. a request to change an altitude or a speed or something, and I couldn't dial in the thing properly because <laughs> the airplane just kept bouncing around. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is not part of X-Plane. This is not part of the airplane itself. This was Xperia Realistic at work. Or if you're in a bank in a corner, you drift off like your head movement or your body position drift off, and you had to get used to that motion that the Xperia Realistic created for you other than just sit there looking at a 2D screen. You feel like you were in a 3D environment. And right. so those things are what sold it to me immediately. Like, yeah, you have to get this, you know? Yeah, and, um, I, I agree. And oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, even playing with the sliders even more with the version two that you're going to be having coming out here. Uh, mm-hmm, awesome mm-hmm. to even tweak those even more. So yeah, but those are the things that got me. For anybody listening who have never used XP Realistic, trust me, once you go down that road and you try to fly without it, it's not going to be the same. Mm-hmm. It just it's it's that that important. Well, thank you. Yeah, and and like you said, I think that the the effect of head gravity 
and uh, you know the movement of the head of the pilot. Those are the basic of the, I mean, the core core effects of extra realistic that just makes it, uh, you know, uh, people look at it and say, hey, hey, this is what I need right now, and all the rest of the effects are extra. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You know>? true. <laughs> yeah, but but I'm trying to make the rest of the effects uh, more of the core effect as well. So uh, so uh, there's more things to expect. So I, I started to say um, that. I'm trying to focus now on aspects that I did not focus on the last time, which are helicopters effects and seaplane effects and fighter fighter jet effects. And uh, I think it's not going to end up with lots of effects, but I think that uh, a few effects for each uh, category like that, um, you know, would make a lot of people happy. Uh, because there are in in our hobby many people you know some some people like bush piloting some people like uh, airliners general aviation etc so i did not touch all of the categories i, I mostly touched the the general aviation and and air, airliners but mostly general aviation i would like to more focus on effects that will you know uh, uh, be uh, you know to fit more categories so this is something that i'm also looking forward to now the big thing, next thing I'm going to talk about is virtual reality. Reality. Now myself, I'm a VR uh, user. I, I'm. I don't remember the last time I flew X-Plane on monitor, other than development of x realistic. Um, and I really love it. Um, however, developing x realistic to to support VR, it's super um, complicated. And it was about six months ago where I think I dedicated about three weeks constant development trying to figure it out and i just couldn't I, I actually got help from leminar and they just told me we're sorry but uh at this point of time we do not expose the, the functionalities that you need um and this brings me to talk about many uh people that give comments about vr and extra realistic where they say i don't need extra realistic in vr because it will make me sick like you know motion sick um so so and that's totally uh, common sense. You say, why? If if the camera will move while I'm inside the cockpit and with my VR goggles on, I will feel that something is wrong. Um, but the, the reality is that uh, I'm trying to move the cockpit and not the camera. So you still will get that feeling of of touchdown. Um, and and this is something that I'm actually uh, working on, and it's really hard. And I, I want to say to those uh, VR users who who listen to us right now that. Uh, it is still on. I do have a POC that I'm working on, a proof of concept, I mean, and, and this is something that I'm, I'm trying to, to get it uh, to work, um, but I cannot promise on that aspect anything because uh, until Laminar will release uh, official camera for VR support, I mean, camera movement support for VR, I would not be able to do it exactly the way I wanted. But I'm not going to neglect that uh, since myself, I'm a VR user, as I said. Uh, it is something that is, I, I'm looking forward to it. You know, like VR, it's like one step away from reality and uh, bringing, it, bringing inside some effects would make it even more uh, realistic. Um, so yeah, those are the things that I'm gonna focus on in the coming six months, um, as far as this is my plan. Um, and then um, in terms of timeline, so we are right now on April. Um, I plan to uh, release, like I said, the beta on July, uh, hopefully before. And then if everything goes well, I believe that around um, end of July, August, the release, uh, official release will come out. And um, uh, I have two things to say about it. First of all, existing users, my goal is that they will not pay anything more. Um, and I told it uh, back back uh, one year ago in the forum, and this is something that I'm trying to to make happen. The thing is, I would like to add licensing uh, uh, capabilities for X Realistic V2. It means that you will have your own serial number, um, and and then um, uh, you will have your own copy. Today, X Realistic is pretty much like you can send it to all of your friends, and it is not something that I think that happened. I'm sure it happened somewhere, sometime. And to be honest, I had no problem with it until now. But uh, you know, putting so much effort on that plugin this time, uh, I believe it's just uh, worth to make it a little bit more secure, to, even for you, for you as a customer. You know, to justify the the money that you spend, and knowing that uh, you spend on something that not just anyone can get from anywhere. 
Um, so this is something I'm working on. It brings a lot of questions uh, from the stores side, Explain Org and Threshold and all, all the, those great stores uh, because it, it brings some uh, issues with that. So I'm trying to do my best so existing customers would not need to pay uh, anything else other than just downloading the upgrade. And um, I, I will do anything to make it happen. So this is something that you guys should know. Um, this is pretty much it as far as real, extra realistic V2. I mean, if you have questions, this is your time. <laughs> no, I was going to say um, your time, time is money. You know, time is not free for anybody, for any of us. And your work needs to be rewarded uh, accordingly, you know. So in the end, mm -hmm. whatever you, uh, you think you have to do to be able to do this work and sustain it and get compensated for it, I think the users of Explain, the majority of them, wouldn't have a problem with what you've got to do with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but whatever you have to do, man, we'll, we, we'll, we'll, well, I will accept it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you're passionate about doing this stuff. I, I'm listening to you talk about um, all the work that's going into it and all the future stuff that's coming out even for VR. And it's like, yeah, I'm shaking my head going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, also, you also made me sit up in my chair when I was slouching with your startup company thing. Like, you know, I'm sitting improper in the simulator. So. <laughs> Right. I hear you. Man. It's good. <laughs> well, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, those those things are, uh, you know, I'm thinking about it days and nights and uh, um, trying my best also to, you know, like uh, consult with, with many of my friends from the community um, to get their opinion about things. Um, and now you guys are my new friends, so I might contact Ooh. you soon, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I like, <laughs> consult with you as well. Um, yeah, this is pretty much about XP realistic. And I, the only last thing I would like to say is that, like I said before, guys, you can trust me. If I'm not here right now, I'm going to be there later. Um, but but here I am back again. And uh, gosh, I can't wait to release it. The, the UI, wow, the UI is beautiful. It's just so different and uh, makes things just more fun. And this is actually what we where we are looking for after all, to, to have some fun, right? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. What's astonished me about just sitting here and listening to you this whole time is just knowing what your product is now and then seeing how your mind has worked in trying to make it even better than it is now, which it's already an amazing product, but seeing everything being rebuilt and in such a cohesive way is really interesting to see because that's not a process that you're often able to see with developers i feel you're able to you you can see their product from from product to product like you can see their v1 then you can see their mm -hmm. v2 but seeing inside their their thoughts and how they come to co uh create these things for their customers is something else like hearing your virtual reality thing like that like i would have never thought about that and already thinking about that is something that I still haven't gotten used to myself being able to predict future stuff and mm -hmm. seeing in your head, I think is really insightful. And it's also a recurring theme. I think that we have seen on the show, which is the best people in our community are the ones who just start at a place where they see that something's missing and they want it and they just go for it and they make something that they want and they make something great for the community and it becomes this amazing thing because secretly everybody else wanted that as well like i i really really share your sentiment at the very beginning where you were like i don't know how people didn't think about this and right. although you did touch here and there about how the design process has made you understand why people haven't done it at the same time it's just like i mean Norm and I have talked. We love sound. Sound is like a really big part of our flight simulation experience. And like having an upgrade to sound in general just seems like a no brainer. And it does, in some ways, it is like, yeah, why wouldn't anybody do that before? But also, it's like really great to see people who are like, who, who notice that and then they go and they take that really simple idea and they run with it and they make it so much more like something like what you have created here. Well, I appreciate it. Oh yeah. Thank you For the longest much. time I thought that the um the what do you call it the speed brakes that come up on landing I thought it was part right. of the airplanes I was flying and then I realized no it was actually XP realistic in the background making that handle up noise <laughs> you know that's the sound that um Sol is talking about that that's worth it so 
you know, those things, man, help. I mean, Saul was saying that just looking at the minds of different developers is like, see a need, fill a need. You saw a need for this thing here that was missing, wondering why Laminar wasn't bringing it out or why it wasn't in the sim. And you're like, you know what? I got this. I'll do it. That stuff is fascinating to us, you know, the, just the background, how you came about these things and how you work mentally and, you know, while developing the product. And it is good to get a, a glimpse into that. You know, that's, that's key for me there, which is good. Well, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And, and you know, I really hope yeah, people, people hearing you right now and, you know, like thoughts comes to their mind, ideas, and uh, it just uh, drive people to, to take the step. And, you know, it's not that hard. You have Fly With Lua. I'm telling you guys, every any one of us can take Fly with Lua and just write something and try to to play with the the beautiful um, XDK of Xplant. They did it. They did an amazing work. It's pretty old, but they did an amazing work. Um, and and I believe that any one of us that has this little touch with computers can take it to the next step and bring ideas and even just to give ideas to other people. I opened I opened the thread in in the Experialistic forum. Uh, XP Realistic V2 wishlist. This is the, the subject of the thread. So anyone that has uh, you know, a wish to have some feature or effect or something that just came to his mind, feel free to add it there. I'm writing in everything in front of me and those are eventually uh, might become real features. So feel free to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's really great to have you be uh, a developer that we've spoken to who's also really, really motivated, motivated by the community in general and wants to hear back from the community. Because, I mean, that's how the best products are made. If you make everybody happy, then you've got a great product there, even if it's not the most amazing thing, because people kind of like start to really enjoy talking to you and enjoy like going through your process with you. So they're a lot more like involved in it and it feels like a lot more personal to them. And I think that that's a great way to run any type of company but let me ask you um sure so you have your love for p3d still there as well um do you have any thoughts on microsoft flight simulator and what you're going to do for that or if you are even going to go there or if you're just going to stick with x-plane because it's what you've grown to love this is a question that I get uh, lately a lot, by the way, and and it's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, there is the you know the new version of Flight Simulator, which uh, myself I'm an alpha tester, and unfortunately I cannot you know like talk about it uh, mm -hmm. even a little bit. This is but their NDA is very strict. Um, neither, but, neither can I. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but but I can before I, I answer directly the question, I, I will I will go in a way of saying. Something good is happening for us, the, the simmers right now, because a lot of new things coming up and it's making uh, everything, uh, you know, moving fast. You know, uh, more new things will come up uh, soon. Uh, if it's a simulator, if it's a plugin, if it's aircraft, scenery, everything is coming, it's, it's, taking, uh, it's taking it to the next step. And I think uh, for us, the, the end users, it's amazing. Um, and 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 then it comes. It, it takes me to the to, to answering the question. Um, I used Chase Plan as well uh, back when I used P3D, and I think Chase Plan is just wow. It's an amazing software. They did a really good job. Um, yeah, and and they they have some effects there for camera. You know, like when you land, you have this touchdown uh, addition effect and stuff like that. And what I say to people nowadays is that I don't see myself. Um, you know, like writing XP realistic version for uh, P3D, but I don't, um, but I do not say no for um, uh, maybe writing something for uh, FS2 2020, but it's too early to, to talk about it. And, and the most important thing for me right now is to be focused. So my focus is to release XP realistic version two, nothing, Will 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 stop me. <laughs> Nothing. So and and if I have some dreams of making something like that for for P3D uh, or a flight simulator for the future version, it will come up later, probably 2021. I don't know. But right now I have main focus um, because I owe my uh, you know I owe version two to the community. Uh, this is the way I feel it. Um, but but. If we're already talking about P3D and stuff like that, um, I must say that P3D, other than, than I found that I spend more money on P3D than I spend on my wedding 
<laughs> yeah. I, I can say that Petri D is, is just an amazing simulator. But uh, but yeah, it is an amazing simulator. I think that of course it, it's not comparable to to X Plan 11 and, and vice versa. Uh, yeah. Each one of them has its own uh, you know downsides and upsides. Um, right. But I, I don't know. For me, uh, nowadays X Plan. It's still my favorite, and it looks like it's gonna stay my favorite for a while. Um, I think I, I, I take everything together: the community, the amount of uh, add-ons, free add-ons that you have out there, the the the, um, the simulator itself, the physics, the graphics that got advanced like crazy in the last two years. Order 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 for for XP and and all the sceneries, and now with Vulcan, you can you can actually enjoy it with great uh, frames per second. Yeah. So, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so I think we're on the right path on on that matter. And if I if you would take me three years back or four years back and ask me the same question, I I would say that uh, the the flight simulator uh, hobby is is just stuck, you know. And and four years later, things looking more promising than ever. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say we're in the middle of a a great movement of flight simulator. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I I I think. Honestly, I think the best thing that Microsoft has done by releasing, announcing their new simulator is not just that it looks amazing um, from everything that they've shown, but also that it's kind of kickstarted everybody who uh, is a third party developer for X Planar P3D. And it's, it's made them realize, oh my God, this is about to come. I need to get my, my ass in gear pretty much. <laughs> and right. just like, and yep. really like make everything as best as it can be so that if I'm deciding to stick with X-Plane that I have that great base there and also just I think it's brought a wave of inspiration I I, I feel like part of the reason why uh, VATSIM is so crazy full of traffic right now and why mm-hmm. everything is just like off the roof is not just because of the coronavirus and everything that's happening there but because people are really inspired to fly because there's this new age of flight simming that's coming in like every single time threshold posts something having to do with like a new product like we see our numbers go up and up every single day and it's it like it's everything is in a great space right now and it's really exciting to see that and i think that that's going to bring some great um, products to our community in the future and also just bring the community together as a whole this is it's, it's a really exciting time to be yep. in the flight simulation community that's the, for sure the energy is definitely. great man. definitely, definitely. Is great and and finally even even people who do not have strong computers uh can actually enjoy great uh frames um so this is something that i i was you know even though my i, I consider my computer to be fine but it's not like a high-end computer um um but like i said like i said i I already prepared my wife to for an upgrade Uh, (laughs) (laughs) but other than that uh, i believe that with those advanced uh, support now with vulcan and and in p3d you have this uh, new update that also people reporting great uh, increase in uh, performance i think it should be standard you know uh we we are in a time where graphics should look good and and uh, run good <laughs> with yes. no more time for no more place for uh for stuttering and and uh and uh, you know crash crashes for simulator and stuff like that uh people and developers out there have all the tools today to make things uh, in the right way and i i'm glad to see that they are taking it and and doing it so um yeah like you said um Exciting times uh, are coming. Um, yeah, I would like to say uh, two more things about um, actually one thing about extra realistic and, and another last thing about a group that I have in fly, in, uh, in Facebook. Um, Go for so it. yeah, sure, thank you. So uh, Threshold would will uh, probably um, uh, release an article in the coming uh, one week or two weeks, I hope. Um, that will, uh, you know, give a sneak preview of the uh, new user interface of XG Realistic, uh, as I mentioned. Um, so it's right now, uh, uh, we are working on it, on the article, and um, once it will be out, uh, uh, you should go in and, and check it out and, uh, you know, just get excited for it. Um, Ooh, talking about being excited, I was going to say, man, 
skydiving instructor did i hear you say that earlier <laughs> wow yes, oh my yes. God. <laughs> I, I have an issue with skies I, I i think i like to be in the skies more than on the ground um oh, you and me both <laughs> <laughs> are you still yeah, a so part I'm... of uh, are you still in aviation as far as flying ga or anything like that or no so like i said israel aviation is really bad um <laughs> you know l there are not too many airports flying it's tr you know uh, three times the price uh than in the united states so i i keep my license alive and i fly about i would say five times or six times a year um but wow i i would really want to fly more and this is why I actually, uh, you know, invested on the simulator. So I'll have this way, uh, way of still flying in, in a way. Um, so, uh, but aviation is, like I said, is part of me always. I'm taking it to different uh, areas, you know, like application for real world aviation, simulators. I fly here and there. So I keep it, I keep it uh, very close to me. Um, also in terms of contacts, uh, since I had this application for the real world, I have a lot of contacts with uh, from from the real world aviation, uh, sporties and other companies, and uh, we keep in touch and you know like share stories and it's really uh, uh, great um, because also in real life the community is amazing. Uh, by the way, I mean I mean some of us know that. Um, so so yeah, aviation is still part of me. Not like I want, but but yeah. Um, there's a, uh, I have a group in, in uh, Facebook called Flight Sim Setups, three words, Flight Sim Setups. And this group uh, I created a while back when I bought my setup. And I said, hey, I want to see what other people have. <laughs> I, want, I want to see what, what they have now. And, um, uh, and this group uh, grew slowly. And today, uh, I, I think that I made this group um, a little bit different uh, because the, the the purpose of the group is first of all to unite the community, uh, not only of Xpen but of P3D and, and Aerofly and other other simulators into one. And secondly, um, uh, we have monthly giveaway, and I'm not talking about small giveaways. Uh, let's say two months ago we gave a throttle from CMAX uh, Cessna 172 throttle hardware uh, for free. And about uh, two weeks ago, we gave flaps uh, for free, um, and we, we have a, we have a sponsorship uh, from a CMAX uh, company, and they uh, give us coupons and giveaways. So I really want to do something good for this community, and and there is nothing better than getting free hardware. <laughs> so so yeah, this is what I'm I'm trying to achieve now with this group, and it's going pretty well. Uh, people that are keeping uh, it's very polite and the posts are amazing. You get to see what people do in their homes, guys. I'm telling you, it's just it just it makes me think I might need to go through a divorce soon. But anyway, um... <laughs> it sounds like some, get, trying to get me to spend more money on my setup over here. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, but but yeah. So what I'm trying to do right now is to collect more sponsors like CMAX and to get to the point where this group will will share giveaways on, on a weekly ma manner. Um, so people will be able to actually get things for free um, and, you know, try things that they would probably would never uh, afford or, or buy for themselves. And uh, this is just something pure good to the community. And, and I think uh, uh, whoever likes hardware and flight simulator should, should check it out um, and, you know, be part of it. I think it's... Uh, it's a fun What's the name of the Facebook group? What's the name of the uh, group? Flight Sim Setups. Three Flight different Sim setups. Okay, yeah, good deal. Separate words. All right. Flight Sim Setups. Um, and that's it pretty much, I think, from that's my a, end. Yeah, that's a plentiful amount of information. Oh, absolutely. Um, Definitely. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to speak with us. And I, I'm excited for XP Realistic 2 now. I think... Once it comes out, I'm definitely going to add that to my to my hanger, um, and I think it'll pair really, really well with the better frames that I'm getting from Vulcan now as well. It'll be a really mm -hmm, great mm -hmm. addition. So you've got me excited, and I don't have version one, so that's saying something. <laughs> 
I, I would like to thank you guys, you know, for giving me the opportunity um, to uh, to share my thoughts and to tell this story. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I think you you guys are doing an amazing work. I, I listened to the uh, to a few of the episodes and. And uh, you know the way you you do it, and uh, it's it's really fun to hear. Unlike uh, many other podcasts, not necessarily for from the flight sim world, but it's just very easy and talking about things that you know really people care about. So really good work, guys, and I really hope uh, you know things going will go um, even even better for you guys than it is going now. Um, so thank you again, as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, that means a lot, um, especially after a day full of lots of compliments and all of that <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> yeah. it's definitely an interesting day to um be in the the in-flight realm i must say but um thank you so much and thank you for um adding to it because as i said earlier uh, we aren't who we are if we don't have our guests who are able to tell us stuff that we don't know about and right. our minds um so thank you for doing that never lose that enthusiasm that you have because it's very infectious and just makes me want to go fly more <laughs> which is good yeah same thank you, here. Thank you. you know i would say as long as my wife understands <laughs> it i will be here <laughs> uh, good. well awesome hopefully my wife will understand once i <laughs> reach that point because <laughs> uh lord knows that check is not going to be fun <laughs> <laughs> i know true